We have two videos to show you. They both come from inside the school. You will not see the shooter. You will not see any victims in these videos, but the images you might find disturbing. Bro, my camera is so dark. No parent wants to see their child hunkered down in a classroom, the teacher using a desk to try to block the door and keep a shooter from getting inside, but that is what that video there shows. We have a second video that we understand is of children of the students hearing someone uh, claiming to be a deputy at the door, but when they hear that deputy say, bro, uh, they decide to go escape through a window rather than open that door. Now, Sheriff Bouchard did not specifically refer to this incident at his briefing last night, but he did say the shooter may have been impersonating a police officer. The kids got out, they ran and kept running until they encountered that uniformed deputy you caught a glimpse of there telling them they were okay. Learning a lot more about the victims. We know there are three right now in critical condition, one of which uh, came out of surgery and is on a ventilator. Um, the sheriff says that that person's condition is um, not looking good at this time. So definitely he's asking for people to think about those people who are those, th those three kids. These, these are teenagers who are in the hospital right now. Now, another information, more information that we learned about what happened inside the high school too. We know that there were seven rounds of ammunition left in his his gun and the sheriff tells us this is Sheriff Bouchard the sheriff of Oakland County tells us that he believes that his deputies interrupted what could have been seven more victims he says when his first deputies got there on the scene and went into the high school that 15 year old suspect was coming down the hall with a loaded gun a gun that again had seven rounds in it something else we're learning about is where he got this gun from and just how long ago it was purchased. I'm going to have a lot more on what the sheriff has to say about that coming up at 11 over on NBC 25 as we continue our team coverage of this. But again, the condition of the victims right now, there are three who are deceased. The identities of them will also bring to you shortly here. Um, but we also know there are three more in critical condition. So these people are struggling right now, these teenagers in the hospital tonight. Dave? Yeah, just a tragic situation for everyone involved, Stephanie. And like Stephanie just said, we're going to have live coverage continuing at 11 o'clock over on NBC 25 in Michigan. Now Ron Hilliard is out there. He was at a prayer vigil tonight. Stay with us. That's coming up over on NBC 25 and the very latest always at midmichigannow.com. school where police say a student gunman opened fire. It's unfortunate I have to report that we have three deceased victims right now who are all believed to be students. Officers rushing to save lives. We had about 25 agencies that responded, close to 60 ambulances. We had a couple of helicopters land also. Within five minutes he was in custody by our deputies. The school now in a state of disbelief. Oh, of course I'm shot. It's devastating. Mid Michigan Now starts with breaking news. We're getting a lot of new information tonight. Three students are dead, eight others injured after a deadly school shooting in Oxford this afternoon. The community is reeling after a gunman opened fire inside the high school just before 1 p.m. According to the Oakland County Sheriff's Office, they received more than 100 911 calls after the suspect open fire. Local authorities said they responded to the active shooting situation with multiple patrol units and EMS units along with SWAT and aviation units. And just moments ago, the sheriff's office releasing the names of those who have died. Their 16 year old Tate Meyer, 14 year old Hannah St. Julian and 17 year old Madison Baldwin. The school is about 30 miles southeast of Flint and around 15 miles north of Pontiac. Students were evacuated from the school and taken next door to a Meyer store. The entire shooting playing out in less than five minutes. Police say the suspect, a 15 year old sophomore at the school, shot 11 people, killing those three students and wounding eight others, including a teacher. Two of those injured were in surgery. Police say they took the suspect into custody without incident and recovered a handgun. 
We have team coverage tonight from Oxford, where our Mid Michigan Now team is covering all the angles. Anchor Stephanie Parkinson is in Pontiac. The very latest from the Oakland County Sheriff's Office and Ron Hilliard was at a vigil for victims in Oxford. But we begin with Stephanie, who was at that news conference. Stephanie? Dave, you talked about the three students who died today, who were shot and killed. There's also three students fighting for their lives, three students in critical condition from Oxford High School, one of which is a 14-year-old, someone who was shot in the chest and in the neck, according to the Oakland County Sheriff, Mike Bouchard. That person is on a ventilator right now, and he said it's not looking good for that, for that student. So definitely to still think about the people right now in the hospital struggling, fighting for their lives after being shot inside Oxford High School today. Something else we learned a little bit ago here from Sheriff Bouchard here in Oakland County in Pontiac is that that gun that the suspect had, the 15-year-old, still had seven rounds in it, according to the sheriff. So he says he had that loaded firearm and that 15-year-old was coming down the hallway toward his deputies when they went inside to try and stop what was happening in Oxford High School. So he said in his words that he interrupted what could have been seven more victims, those deputies that first entered the building right away. Um, he said they didn't wait. They got there, they went in, and they did what they had to do. He says that's what they're trained to do. We're also, we've been trying to figure out all day, where did this gun come from? Did he legally have it? Well, tonight, Sheriff Bouchard did answer some of our questions surrounding that. Take a listen. Preliminary investigation revealed that the weapon used in this shooting was purchased on November 26th, four days ago, by the boy's father. The gun had uh, 15 round magazines. We found two of them. There allegedly was three. Now, we did ask some more information about the, the guns in the house because there was a search warrant executed on the suspect's home, and we asked if there were any more guns taken from the home, if this family had other weapons, or, you know, basically if it was kind of normal for the father to buy another weapon just four days ago or, or not. We didn't get answers to those questions because they say that's ongoing part of the investigation. And as we've reported earlier today, both the suspect who's 15 years old and the suspect's parents are not talking with investigators at this time. They have the right to do that and they've hired an attorney. Right now that 15 year old is in a juvenile facility not far from where we are here in Pontiac. And as far as motive, we've asked the sheriff about that. And he said, well, the person who could really give us the most on that isn't talking to us. So right now they don't have anything to share as far as motive goes for this. Now, this also is something that um, they, since they don't know much with this 15 year old, they have him on suicide watch tonight. We're told by the, um, the county that they are checking on him every 15 minutes at that juvenile facility. So of course, we'll continue to try and get more updates from them tomorrow. I think this is probably the last of updates that we're gonna get though for tonight. Uh, we have team coverage for you though. Um, our Ron Hilliard has been tonight at a vigil where he has been speaking with students and with families there. Um, Ron, what are they telling you tonight? Stephanie, a lot of people are hurting, a lot of people inside crying at the vigil, just overwhelmed by emotion, and some people reliving what they went through this afternoon at the school. Now, they were supported by the community and family and friends all coming together, and the message was that it is okay to grieve. I so have the flashbacks of hearing the gunshots and the crying and sadness and screaming from that happening. First shot was fired, everyone's frozen. And then the next couple shots, our teachers tell us to get down, hide, barricade the doors. So of course you got the people pushing desks over, over there. And as soon as we hear those bullets going away, that's when we just leave the building. Friends Miguel and Raymond are reflecting on the scary moments Tuesday afternoon when bullets rang out. Following the deadly shooting at Oxford High School, the two freshmen joined others for a candlelight vigil and prayer service at Lake Point Community Church. In the audience, dozens of students who were at the school also showed up, including one teen who was identified as one of the students who was wounded but released from the hospital. The friends say they're comforted by the support of their family and community, but that they're reliving what happened. I feel very bad for the families that have injured children or have lost children from today. So I would send out my hopes and prayers out to them. I'm still kind of shook about the experience, but it kind of gives me hope. You know, there's a lot of people and, you know, whether it was students, parents, or just people that are part of the community that were affected by this, you know? 
it just kind of gives me hope that, you know, even after, like, all this bad stuff that's happened, like, there's still good people here. And a sign that there are still good people, many people showing up here at the vigil that perhaps were not directly impacted, but indirectly affected and still wanting to show that they care about this community. Now, the pastors who spoke today said that people uh, are welcome or encouraged to embrace all the support, talk to people, and even telling people that it's okay to also get counseling if necessary. We're in Oxford Township. Ron Hilliard, Mid Michigan Now. Thank you, Ron. The school district releasing a letter to parents tonight saying all schools in the district will be closed for the remainder of the week. One parent and her son say they are concerned over safety after this mass shooting that happened at Oxford High School. Mid Michigan House Courtney Bennett has their reaction. A heartbreaking scene playing out at Oxford High School Tuesday afternoon after a 15 year old sophomore opened fire, killing three and wounding eight. To have to worry about your kid every day, you send him to school to go get a lesson that's not being taught to come out to be wounded. And I think that's very bad. Robin Redding's son, Treshawn Bryant, is a student at Oxford High School. She decided to keep her son home today after she says rumors of violence at the school were spreading on social media. Parents were asked to meet their students at the Meyer store. Students were bused from the school to the parking lot. Robin says she believes more security is needed at the school. It's definitely an alarm and it's cause for where I'm not sending my son back to that school. She believes that Oxford High School should go back to virtual learning for the remainder of the 20. 2021-2022 school year after today's mass shooting. Her son agrees, saying he thinks more needs to be done to keep himself and other students safe. I think that our schools should be more protective. If you're going to allow your kids to go to school, make sure they're okay and they're, know that they are safe. According to the district, they have a deputy assigned to each school. All exterior doors are locked during the school day and there's a lockdown procedure in place. Reporting in Oxford, Courtney Bennett, in Michigan now. Well, let's take a look at how lawmakers are reacting to this on social media. President Biden tweeted out saying, quote, my heart goes out to the families of all those in Oxford, Michigan, experiencing this unimaginable grief of losing a loved one. Gun control advocate and former Congresswoman Gabby Giffords took to Twitter. Now, she survived a shooting back in 2012, but suffered a brain injury. She wrote, quote, every day that our country does not pass life-saving gun laws is another day we fail our children. And Senator Debbie Stabenow tweeting, this news is a gut punch for parents and families in our state. Governor Whitmer taking questions near the school earlier today when she was asked about gun control. She said now is not the time for that conversation. I think it's too early to talk about policies that might need to change as a result of this. We're relying on um, law enforcement to share information as it is available. But at, at this point, I think we need to focus on the tragedy at hand in the moment. How did you hear about However, the governor did release a written statement about an hour before she just said that when she was asked that question, which mentions protecting people from gun violence. Part of that statement reads, we have the tools to reduce gun violence in Michigan. This is a time for us to come together and help our children feel safe at school. An expert on school security tells us schools need to be prepared for these types of horrific shootings. Tom Einsberg from Critical Incident Management is a former state trooper who trains school districts to respond to active shooter situations. Speaking to MidMichigan Now, he says schools need to think about safety measures no matter how overwhelmed they are with other issues. My schools right now that I'm dealing with are overwhelmed with COVID, but I keep telling them this is still in the background. This is still a big part of our safety, and I know you're overwhelmed with COVID, but we have to stay proactive in our measures and, and keep our training up and uh, keep improving on our systems. <laughs>